Here at the New York AES show, first day, I'm here with Paul from Lynx, one of our go-to guys. Uh, we're here to talk about this new product called the Hilo, which will hopefully be shipping soon. We're really looking forward to it. It's got some really great features. Paul's going to go through some of the key elements for this unit, and uh, I'm going to let Paul take it away. Okay, great. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, basically, the Helio was something that we created in response to customer feedback. You know, people said they, they loved the Aurora. They wanted something with smaller, uh, you know, smaller channel count for a singer-songwriter. Sometimes mastering guys don't need all the channels. Um, there's an interesting market with uh, audiophile, home theater, and, and home audio people that were interested. And for the first time ever, we have a product that can be used um, on site for remote recording as well. The, the Hilo can be patterned, powered by a DC battery. So, um, so anyhow, there's sort of four key markets behind it. Uh, we want to do a lot more than just make a two-channel version of the Aurora, though. So one of the things we did is we spent a lot of time on the analog front end to make it sonically an improvement over the Aurora. Uh, an innovative thing that uh, Bob, the hardware designer, did was he used stereo DACs and ADCs to power one channel. And when you do that, you get a little bit extra signal noise and dynamic range numbers out of the thing. So it's sonically a pretty substantial improvement over the Aurora, particularly on the DAC side. Um, wider dynamic range, better SN specs, and, uh, and just a more open sound field. So, uh, in addition to that, it's also a really powerful routing device. It's much more than a two-channel converter. In fact, it's two channels of AD conversion. It's actually six of DA. The main out, the line out, and the headphone out all have their own DACs, so they can have completely unique mixes. Uh, one well, that's of the fantastic. things, yeah, the the uh, line outs being independent was something we did directly in response to feedback from users, particularly mastering guys, because they wanted to have a signal chain. They wanted to have their main out that they're listening to right. and have a separate output going to their outboard gear and coming back in. So it was basically a way to accommodate that, but also for surround sound, you know, now you have at least four channels or six channels of analog output you can use for that too. So um, one of the things we're very proud of is the quality of the headphone amp. Uh, we spent a lot of time on that, and I think if you compare it to other dedicated headphone amps in your line, you'll find this thing just sounds absolutely stellar. It's, it's really, really an amazing uh, performing piece. There's also a lot of digital formats that are part of the Hilo. Uh, it supports ADAT light pipe, SPDIF optical, SPDIF coax, and aes -EBU. And then it's a USB connection from there to the computer. So there's a lot of I.O. going on. It's much more than just straight up ADDA. Exactly. So, so that's part of why the other innovation we did was a touch screen to control it because there is so much going on uh, and it just much, makes it much simpler to do that. Uh, first thing we're seeing here is the metering. As you can see, kind of classic analog style metering. You can change that to three different types just on the front panel. They're sort of Duro style meters like that. You can control which source those are uh, displaying for you. So like we have phones and line out here if those are different. The knob is context specific, so it can control parameters, increment, decrement, and also be an analog volume control for the outputs as well. So, so in addition to that, with the touch screen you have other features you can control. This is the navigation. You have home, config, uh, IO, display settings, and then meters. So. You can do things like establish what the optical out is going to be, whether it's ADAT or, or SPDIF. Um, you know, synchro lock, just like we have on the Aurora's on board, sync source, a lot of the kind of standard things. The trims, you know, on the Aurora, how you have either the VT model or you can toggle between plus 10 and or, you know, plus 4 and negative 10. It's all done from the touchscreen? Yeah, it's still variable and you could adjust it if you want to to fine tune, you know, the, the trims, but now it hits plus 24, plus 22, plus 20, plus 18, plus 6, plus 4, plus so 2. Steps. So it Yeah, it okay. steps basically, yeah. And that's on the input and the output. The digital in source is selectable. Now this page is where a lot of action happens. Um, this is the, the uh, mix output routing page. And this is where you assign a source to an output or a combination of sources. So for instance, right now we're looking at the line out. We can change the output we're looking at anywhere. So let's say headphones. We're assigning USB 1 and 2 and USB 5 and 6. I can also add the line in at that point and route whatever I want to anything. Oh, that's basically. nice. 
And then for each source that I've created, now I can control the level of that source feeding that output that way. So essentially a little bit of a built-in mixer kind of right in here on this unit. Yeah, more than a little. It's, it's a 32-channel mixer built right into the unit. Between the USB sources, ADAT, I mean, there's a lot of sources. So we had to have a way of controlling it. You can flip over to the volume control of the output that you're using, and that increments. Or if you press the knob, it'll flip between the two. Oh, OK. So and quite responsive. It's very responsive to how quickly you're moving the, the knob. There's also a panic mode. So if you've got too much signal, you can just you know, knock it down very quickly. So, so that page has a lot going on. That's a, a very powerful, unique feature of the device. There's things like you can go back to default routing, a system test. There's a test tone generator for setting levels, um, frequency counters, the digital in channel status, AES channel status, et cetera, et cetera. Things like if it has the uh, parity bit and things like that can all be displayed. Um, Spdiff clocks out. So anyhow, a lot of utilitarian stuff. Uh, the menu delay, basically the way it works is that if you don't touch it, it'll revert back to the meters. So you can control how long it takes for that to happen. So that's sort of like the default position, basically. So pretty much every aspect of that screen, go in, doctor it, tailor it the way you want it, and it's going to do what you want it to do. Yeah, exactly. Whether or not it shows the sample rate all the time or the sync source, all those things are uh, customizable. And it's something we're continually working on, too. It's going gonna, it's gonna to evolve over time. This will be updated through a firmware update through the computer. It has a USB connection already, so you just run a program and, and program up, you know, update the firmware. Updates. Yeah, exactly. Well, we're really excited about this to come out. We've heard nothing but great reviews about the converters in it. So Yeah, we're very excited. It's an, a, a new move for us, and uh, we really anticipate it to do very well. We're excited there. about it as well. Paul, thank you again for showing us the Hilo. And again, the Lynx Hilo, hopefully shipping before the end of the year.